All right, folks, we are back here on track with the ZX4 RR. It's newly flashed, making 25 more horsepower, and it's got sticky Dunlop Q5 tires. We're testing it against our very own personal Endurance Ninja 400 bike, currently the CMRA Ultra Lightweight Championship leading bike. <laughs> right, Brandon? <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. Our team currently leads the championship. We're uh, trying to make it uh, to, so we can actually win the damn thing. Uh, we thought that this was the most fair comparison between the Ninja 400 and the ZX4, right? I mean, this makes so much more power. Yeah, it does. And we haven't, we know for a fact we haven't touched this motor. So yeah. it's the most stock, at least form of this bike that we can get. Yeah. So walk me through this bike. Um, so this one's a fairly straightforward, very entry level type racing situation. Mm -hmm. um, got, we got a quick shifter. We got a flash on this thing just to allow for adjustments that we haven't done, mm -hmm. actually. Um, we still have our stock panel up here. Everything is still stock. We have direct <laughs> line brakes, which is great. Big, yeah. Yep. Uh, Magura uh, master cylinder. Mm -hmm. So we get great feeling through the brakes. And I'm, I'm really, that's about it. We got a slick front tire. We got some suspension done on the front. It's still the stock externals, but we changed the internals. Yep. The rear shock is different. Yeah, we have Keith Hertel's special shock on there. Exactly, Franken shock. Franken shock. And we got a DOT rear, both Continental tires. Yeah. So, in most people's worlds, a very low spec tire. Very low so, spec tire. Very low spec build. Exactly. It's got race plastic, so it is much lighter than the ZX4 yep. Double R. I'd say this thing's tipping the scales at what 320, 330. Something I probably, like that. I'd probably say around there. We still got stock harnesses. Uh, all yep. that stuff is still stock. Oh, yeah, it's so. it's a race bike, but only just really. Like <laughs> it's it's pretty much a stock Ninja 400. Um, it does have some pretty trick parts, but you know we wanted to make it fair against this thing. It has a four cylinder engine, 75 horsepower, electronics, quick shifter up and down, all this fancy stuff. And today we're gonna run the whole day back and forth. Me and Brandon are gonna swap these bikes. We're gonna get lap times, and we're gonna evaluate how these two machines do on track and if the zx 4 R can finally keep up with the Ninja 400 because last time against a race prep Ninja 400 it was struggling. Yeah it was and that's that's why I wanted to redo this because that bike we didn't know we didn't know how much was put into the motor mm -hmm. we knew there was something put into the motor we just yeah. didn't know to what extent so we definitely want to get footage of another pull try yes. to do some speed tests we know this thing should beat it on torque yeah but it shouldn't get demolished like it did last time. No. So I'd be interested to see how these things fare out. And especially this first session, it doesn't seem like there's gonna be if anybody out here. Just me and you. So <laughs> we, we have plenty of time to just be screwing around doing that stuff. That's right. All right, folks, we're gonna get these bikes on track, get the lap times, and we're gonna evaluate how they do. Q5s feel real good. up in the morning. Hi 
everyone wrapping the day up here with the ZX4 versus our Endurance Prep Ninja 400, and the results might actually surprise you. Brandon, you want to tell the folks the numbers? Do you remember all of them? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I did a 213 on this guy. 213. You did a 216. 216. Um, these are phone times. We couldn't get the lap timer to work with. Yeah, the lap timer is messing up, so this is just clicked off. So, you know, ish. Just a small grain of salt there. Yeah. So 216, 213. Yeah. And then on that one, we did get the lap timer to work once. For you. I got a 210. 210.8? 210. Somewhere like around, right around there. And then you were at 214.4, I believe. On the phone. On the phone. Get it to work yeah. Right. So also, small grain of salt. We, we have to assume that I was so much faster than that. Oh, was, uh, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, yeah, I would say surprising results. Um, from, a, from a rider perspective, from a feeling perspective, how did you feel on this versus this? Uh, night and day, honestly, that 10 million times better. I mean, we do have work done to it. It's yeah. meant to handle a lot better, but as it sits, it's still cheaper than this one. Yeah, So it's still cheaper. It's hard to adjust. I mean, we I had the issue the first session. I started on that, everything was great. Went to this, felt like I was gonna crash my brains out. Yeah. I had to take a session off to make sure that this thing was okay. Yeah, um, we I, got an oil temp light. Yeah, we got an oil right. temp light. Started getting some heat in it. After me and you were playing a little bit, I was on this, you were on that. Mm -hmm. We were playing around a bit. And I got an oil temp light, had to back off, make sure the bike stayed cool. Yeah. Um, had a little grass excursion. <laughs> We can skate over we'll that. Definitely include, <laughs> no doubt. Uh, pro level rider over here going off into the grass. What are you doing? I've, what are you I doing? Was trying, stay on the pavement. I was <laughs> trying to let you know that I wasn't. I was gonna come in in case you were looking for me. I didn't the want only you. way I can keep up with Brandon is if he goes off track <laughs> and then I can close the gap. Um, but you know, my takeaway for this thing over this was that damn throttle, man. That like, was the issue. You that know, like for me, and I know for you too. I'd be off gas on the brakes, but it wasn't fully off the gas. Yeah. You like I would I'd start running wide and I'm like, why am I not going where I yeah. want to go? It's because the gas is still on and the bike is opening up the radius. It's literally yeah. going wide. You felt that too, yeah, right? It was awful. It it got worse the more laps you did because you're, you're just getting tired because you were fighting it the whole you're time. Because you're like mentally having to tell yourself, all right, give more off throttle yeah. to get it to work. If you could just create a small dead zone in it before you activate, it'd be so much better. Yeah. It, a lot more predictable at least. And the thing is, because it's fly by wire, no adjustment to be made from, uh, you know, you can't like, you know, change the slack on the cables and create yeah. a little dead zone. You can't do anything. You'd have to go into the ECU and change exactly. it. Exactly. And uh, this doesn't let you as of this moment. Yeah. Least. You're gonna have to get something else to talk to it and figure it out. Yeah. The other thing I felt, I want to get your opinion on this, was weight. Yeah, no, Dude, that, that I, was the main thing. feels so heavy compared to the 400. That was the thing I, I couldn't really get around was I didn't notice it that much from the 390 for some reason. I didn't, it was a very easy transition going back and forth. But going from that to this, it was so much different. I, yeah. it, again, it took a session to get used to and it, it completely threw me off. I had to get my bearings right again to make sure that we didn't, mess this thing up somehow yeah. like it, it it felt like you flashed it and added 100 pounds to the front yeah it, even from the memory that i had for last time of riding it it felt yeah. that much different it was very weird yeah it, it's bizarre it just felt very very heavy yeah. it didn't feel like it wanted to steer quickly and again yeah this is race prep it's very lightweight uh, but even stock a ninja 400 is like 360 pounds thereabouts which yeah. is about 50 pounds less than the 400 uh the double r over here yeah um, what else did you feel? I mean, otherwise, when, whenever I got used to it, again, this bike felt great. It felt like a completely different machine from uh, not having it flashed to having it flashed. Yes. It felt so much better. Yeah. Um, it, all of a sudden, it unlocked the minimum amount of torque that it needed, at least to hang with its brother 400. Oh, yeah. We did a third gear pull. We actually got footage of that one this mm -hmm. time and a second gear pull. Mm -hmm. And each time, yeah, if they would be even until fourth gear. Yeah, Once and fourth then they gear, start pulling. Pull. Yeah, which for a stock bike is pretty impressive. Exactly. That you know this power-wise, right there with a fully prepped bike, that was pretty cool. Exactly. So it, it got great. It, it compared to itself, it felt phenomenal. Fantastic bike. Did everything you needed to. The only fault that we had was that fly-by wire. 
Yeah. And otherwise, it was, it was a great bike all around. Yeah, it's a good bike all around. The flyby wire was a little funny. Um, I would, you know, we're not going to do it because it's a giveaway bike and I need to keep it a little <laughs> bit stuck, but I would be super curious to see like a full race prep version of this bike. Yeah, I would be too because it has to race against, unfortunately, R7s and yeah. 660s and stuff like that. And I don't, I can't see it currently if it was to be race prep, uh -uh. if it, it, it can hang with us. Uh -uh. It doesn't have the torque. And we have the data too, because I came out here on a bone stock R7 on a way less warm day than this. And I was doing 214s yeah. all day on that. So 216 on this, so about a two second Delta. And you might say, oh, the horsepower is the same. Yeah, I'm like, why'd you, why'd you go two seconds slower or faster? It's the torque. <laughs> it is. It's the torque, dude. Like this with thing. With the elevation you have up here, you're yeah. getting on the gas going up a hill. Yeah. Torque's gonna, gonna be the only thing that helps you. That's 689cc on the R7. It carries you, you, you keep, mm -hmm. that momentum, it keeps going, but. Yeah. And again, we still couldn't get out of fourth gear today. It drove through fourth gear, yeah. but we still couldn't get out of fourth gear yeah. into fifth gear on the back straight. So that would tell me that we need to gear it more aggressively for this Which track. Which is astounding. It's, it's already on a 1448 setup. Yeah. So what, are, like I said, what are we gonna do? Put it on a 52.3 or in a 13 front? Like that's, that's those are stupid gears. Pretty drastic. It's Just pretty to be able to use all the gears. To use drastic. all the gears. I think it's because the rev range is so goddamn big. You mm -hmm. know, that, that, that's the thing. Like it just revs forever. And so that's why it ends up being that way. Yeah. For me, it was really interesting riding this bike over this one because this bike is so great. The Ninja 400 is so great. We have it in a very uh, nice spot. It, yeah. It, it handles well, it breaks. Decent. <laughs> you, you don't like the pads. <laughs> I think it needs I like the, pads. the I like the feeling because it makes you break less. But you're like, I want to well, be able to just break. Just look how much heat we've put in that rotor. Look how much how many colors there are. I know. It is very colorful. It is colorful. <laughs> it's Beautiful. getting hot. It's yeah. doing its job. But it, I I would like them to. Be. If only our mechanic <laughs> would put the pads back on. Um, Damn you, Keith. But otherwise, yeah, no. It, we have that 400 in such a great spot. Yeah. It's made or currently set up to fit five different riding styles yeah we had five different people riding this bike and every single one of them are like it's 80 85 percent there perfect yeah which is great for an endurance bike yeah this to me is like such a perfect little track bike the yeah. way it is and it really showed to me the difference that uh race suspension versus stock suspension mm -hmm. makes honestly like yes you could say we're on the slick front tire here and that does give you a little more feel and we have a direct line master cylinder Hold on to your hats, Brandon, I'm not done speaking. Yeah, <laughs> gotta put my tinfoil hat on. Yeah, the master cylinder is super direct line feeling, but really the the front end is so composed, man. It like, is. You, and you, you break and it's like, it's just handling it. And this is, I still think Pogo-y kind of funny. And it's nothing against it. It is it's just street suspension. It's meant to iron out bumps and everything. Yeah. That's not meant to. It's meant to be like, all right, you're gonna feel every bit of this. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna crash, but you're gonna feel it. Yeah. And that's okay, because we want that feeling. Want the feel. Stock suspension is not meant to do that. Yeah. So give it a little leeway there, which, but I still agree. The front and the, the, at least the balance, the front and rear of that bike is so much better than the front and rear of this bike. Yeah. It, there's so much weight up here where, you know, compared to a 600 or even a 660, there's weight up front, but it's balanced with a fair amount of weight in the back. Yeah. You know, 60, 40 or 70, 30 split. This feels like an 80, 20, 90, 10 type of thing. Yeah. There's so much weight up here, yeah, yeah. which is, yeah, where you want it, but there's nothing in the back. Yeah. at all there's, there's a muffler and you get rid of that and there's even less weight in the back it's there's nothing back there so you almost lose feeling out of both tires just yeah. because there's so much weight up and i think that you know because of this bike how much it weighs and because it doesn't make the torque of a big bike it ends up feeling a little awkward you know it like it's got that heavy that more heavyweight feel mm -hmm. but it doesn't have that punch that you would expect yeah. out of a 600 or a, an r7 or something like exactly. that um so yeah, the little Endurance Ninja 400 here, just <laughs> notching them up for the Ninja 400. Um, and we did this specifically because this bike is flashed and makes 75 horsepower. That's no joke. That's two more cylinders. That's a lot more power. We, if we brought a stock Ninja 400, yes, I think this bike would beat it, but we wanted to make it a little bit more apples to apples. But I know people are going to get mad at us for bringing a race bike versus <laughs> I do that. feel it is, it, is point, it is important to point out that Technically speaking, this did beat that. If that in completely stock form, in stock suspension yes. and everything like that, 
this beats that, which is exactly what Kawasaki says it's yes, supposed to. Yes, that's it true. It drags it eventually. Yeah. It it breaks technically better. I mean, it does stock to stock. It's gonna break better. Mm -hmm. You have another rotor in there. Mm -hmm. It handles okay. I would probably put them on even par with handling stock to stock. Stock to stock, yeah. Um, so technically speaking, it is a better bike, but is it six grand better? Yeah, it's always the price with the ZX4. The it's always that's the, the, the price, you know, like the fact that you can go and get an Ninja 400 for a little over six grand and it's that good and that close to that. Mm -hmm. I don't see why as a beginner you'd really get that unless you really want the inline four sound. You just really want that. Yeah, and that. you want a bit of tech, which but you know if you push the tech to the limit, it starts be to become the issue. Yeah, it start starts to become a bit of a problem. But honestly, like I was riding the 400 and I don't know, I didn't really miss the inline four no. scream because I thought that thing sounded cool. No, because we, we had much more fun. We're like, okay, cool. It sounds like a lawnmower, especially because the O2 sensor popped out. Um, <laughs> race bike thing. <laughs> race bike stuff. It is what it is, but we had so much more fun because way more fun. We we could lay it all the way over. Oh my god! I was dragging elbow on this thing. You did officially drag elbow. Drag elbow. You're a squid now. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it was four seconds slower than you, but I dragged elbow. I got there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's my body position doesn't matter at all. <laughs> um, it, it's we had more fun on it. Yeah. And, there is a bit of salt to be held in there because, yeah, we're not afraid of eating it. No. We, are, we don't want to eat this. No, it's y'all's no. bike. We don't want to eat it. We're okay eating that. It's yeah. at some point going to be. It's a race bike. At some point in its life, it's going to be thrown down the road. And we know don't that. say that. We have to keep it upright. Not this we're year. We're in the lead. It's a next year thing. It's a next year. <laughs> but it's still, we're, we're not as emotionally tied to it because no, we no. know exactly what it's going it's yeah. meant to do. It. We built it to do that. This is not, this is for them. Yeah. So there is a bit of distinction there because I can push to 70-ish percent like I did today. Where this, I can only go 50, 60 because yeah. I can't find those limits because you can't find limits unless you cross them. Yeah. I think the, the biggest thing for me is when, I think of session two where you were on the ZX4 and I was on the Ninja 400. And as soon as I got on the thing, I was like, oh, hell yeah. I was like, I'm just, I, I was just gobbling you up mid corner. And I was like, this should not happen yeah. with, with Brandon on track. Like, and I was, and you could tell even I could, from the footage, yeah. I was vastly uncomfortable. You were just like, uh, uh. like I could, there was, I could there was see hesitation. it visually. So it took a, a long time today to be to the point where like, all right, cool. I can do a semi-comfortable hot lap yeah. till he show the potential of it. But the moment I jumped out, I was like, all right, cool, done. Yeah. Hot lap, here you go, here, yep. right here. So yeah. it. It's difficult, it is. But technically speaking, this does exactly what on paper mm -hmm. it's supposed Over to. Over the Ninja 400. Over yes. the 400. It does. So we've we've confirmed that this bike does go faster than a stock Ninja 400, but I do think that a little bit of work done to a Ninja 400 and it's right there if not better. Uh, we were both roughly three seconds faster, uh, kind of bike to bike and rider to rider. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, it was even across both of them. Yeah. So you were two, three seconds right there on both platforms. I think the next step, Brandon, because this bike needs to come back on track for a fourth time, it's gonna be the most <laughs> tracked giveaway bike ever. We're gonna get a stock Ninja 400 versus a stock ZX4. Because you got one coming. Because I get, shh, shh, don't. Shh, don't say anything. Don't say anything, folks, but we got one coming. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Remember, that is a giveaway motorcycle. Make sure you go and check out yamenoob.co, get entered to win. Uh, this is not a giveaway motorcycle. This is our bike. <laughs> We're going to win the championship this year, and I'm going to gloat about it for forever. It's going to be great. Oh, put, a, put a big old number one sticker on there. And have confetti cannons all yeah, day, every day. Even though Brandon did like 60% of the work. It's okay. <laughs> We're number one, baby. We are number one. We're number one. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Brother, I was just like you once before. I remember I was a squid. I was doing terrible things on the street. But then I found Yammy Noob, and I kept watching Yammy Noob. And that made me feel better. And when I got better, I stopped doing terrible things on my H2 back here. So I implore you, keep watching Yammy Noob. Click subscribe. Watch the next video.